Good afternoon and welcome to Cast Conversations with Jay Scheib and Rian Flynn. We'll begin with an excerpt from World of Wires directed by Jay Scheib at MIT in 2018. A longer version of the video will be played at the end of this conversation. I think I figured out how to model barometric pressure. So let me know if you notice like your ears popping or anything like that. Mm -hmm. All right, extraction phrase, nobody's here. Ready, in three, two, and one. Whoa, wow. So I'm here and I can see you, but you can't see me. Uh, hi, Professor Lee. Um, okay. Hi, hey, what's uh, what is Stopper doing? Just a basic tour, just checking some stuff. We haven't done those today. Ow, <laughs> my ears just popped. Crazy air pressure. What is she doing on this channel? She shouldn't be in there. My name is Rian Flynn, and I'm an undergraduate student in physics and theater arts at MIT. Today, it's my pleasure to be joined by Professor Jay Scheib for MIT CAST's Three Questions series. Hi, hi, thanks, Rian, and um, it's great to be here. Um, my name is Jay Scheib, as you just heard, and um, I'm a professor for theater arts here at MIT. Um, I just realized that I've been a professor for theater arts here now for 17 years, which is kind of like a, a shocker for me. It's great to be here. Thanks, Jay. So to start off the conversation, how do you use MIT and its students to prototype and iterate your off-campus work? And what are you able to do as a director at MIT that you might not be able to do elsewhere? Um, okay. Uh, First question first. Um, uh, you know, I think like, I think on average in the old days, on, on average, um, I, would do I would do three or four productions in a year. Um, in the summer, especially, I, I would make things happen. And, and doing them kind of, kind of all over the US, and pri but primarily in Europe. And so at, at MIT, my, courses um, would ultimately be like an extension of my research process. And so um, I would develop classes or seminars that would kind of align with um, whatever productions I might happen to have on the horizon. And whenever possible, um, I, I would try to develop aspects of the work on, on campus. and. Um, I've always found it to be like a super rich process to work with students in, in, that, in that process. World of Wires, the excerpt that we just saw is a, was an example of, of that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, in terms of like what I can do at MIT that can't be done elsewhere, um, that's a, like a super long list um, because it's definitely not every, um, every theater company in the world where you can sort of stroll down the hall and, you know, bump, bump into someone from Aero Astro, for example. Um, so being, being constantly confronted with entirely different um, ways of thinking and ways of seeing and, and comprehending the world um, is something that really can't be duplicated anywhere else. Um, so that, that kind of level of interdisciplinarity is, you know, shockingly important to me. Yeah, I've definitely seen how you've collaborated with people in Aero Astro or other departments and 
it's been incredible to see uh, the work that's come out of that. Um, Jay, in the two classes I've taken with you at MIT, I've greatly enjoyed the times when you brought in your professional collaborators to teach like many master classes. And I've loved being able to work with your professional collaborators on projects like The Silence. Uh, yeah. What was it like to combine MIT students with your usual collaborators? And could you speak to how you bring these collaborators into your teaching? Oh, um, well, uh... So a lot of a lot of what um, a lot of what I've been um, obsessed with over the years has to do with um, working in working in theater or in opera, which are which are two like really really old art forms, and also sometimes incredibly conservative art forms, art forms with big walls around them, especially opera. And um, I've always been quite obsessed with bringing you know, other disciplines to bear on, on these potentially really conservative forms. Um, and that means that often I'm often I'm working with people who have wildly different skill sets. And so it's, um, it's, it's really kind of an invaluable thing to bring someone like to bring a cinematographer, for instance, like Paulina Jurczyk, um, uh, who you met, um, but bringing her from outside, I would usually only work with her in, in various theatrical productions uh, but bringing her to um, the classroom allows everyone to basically like get a perspective that's like really different from mine and um and learn new tricks you know so I, I find i find that i find that it's just a really expansive experience um and, it, and following on your the second part of your question <laughs> um it, Bringing, you know, incorporating like in a work like The Silence. So we adapted Ingmar Bergman's um, film, The Silence, uh, to a, a sort of live cinema performance, um, which we prototyped in like two or really like fast and furious weeks. Um, and it was a, a mixture of students and faculty and, um, and um, profis from, you know, around the country who participated. Um, now, th there was a time when I, I would do this sort of thing that where I would think, oh gosh, I need to like kind of like protect the students, like not give them too much, not like put them at the center of the thing, not like not, not put them in a position where, I don't know, they might have a bad experience or feel somehow like they weren't able to keep up, whatever. And that's probably true at some some schools that might be a good strategy but i've found that at mit most of our students like would totally like not even like allow that to happen um so it it's been exciting to just like throw people in um and you know the the result of that kind of attitude is that the students rise to the occasion um everyone tends to be like incredibly generous because there's this like you know great like um energy in the room from from the students and that and the combination is i think really quite electric um and and as a result i've ended up touring with students that i worked with um, to places like the walker arts center to hungary to new york um, really all, all over all over the place um so that's um that's really a great um a great symbiotic relationship and, I, and in the end everyone gets something from it. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed um, acting as camera operator on the yeah. silence when you just kind of threw me in there and had me with no camera experience just start operating a camera. Uh, that was, you had that was really incredible. You had some experience. You had a little experience. Um, and by the way, you shot it beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, Jay, in your work, you've often experienced the intersection of the real and the virtual. And given that technology is increasingly acting as such a direct performance interface, how does the cutting edge research at MIT that you've been involved in manifest in your art? I think the biggest, the biggest aspect or the, the biggest impact that being at MIT has had on my sort of engagement with technology in what is otherwise a super analog art form um, is um, it's just to be kind of fearless about it. 
and to, you know, and to go ahead and like ask questions that, you know, at, at first glance don't make sense, you know, like, does it make sense for an audience of 2000 people in an opera house to all wear, um, you know, goggles? <laughs> Uh, probably not. So we should try. <laughs> and I, I think um, in a way like MIT has taught me to think like that for sure. Um, but it's also given me an opportunity to like think in a way but quite incrementally. So the ways in which I've, I've worked with cameras over the years has con continually like grown and expanded and, and I, I kind of like focus in a studio practice on taking one step after another. Um, and I'm, I'm now in the process of trying to figure out um, to what degree I can use volumetric, um, volumetric uh, videography in order to create a, a, an entirely different sense of, sense of liveness. Um, no longer using cameras, but actually, measure, but actually capturing motion and light and um, finding ways to um, speed that up to you know, to, to real time. So in a way, like, I, I don't think I ever, I, I probably would have never even heard of volumetric filmmaking until it had become mainstream had I not been um, in the halls of MIT. <laughs> so it's a, you know, it's a, um, it's kind of a perfect relationship. Can you speak to any upcoming work that you're doing that involves, you, you alluded to it in, um, and talking about uh, 2,000 people in an opera house uh, yeah. with, with goggles on. Can you speak more to that? Um, yeah, well, uh, I can and I can't, I guess. Um, it, hasn't been, it hasn't been announced because now everything has been um, postponed. Um, but um, I have, um, let's just say I have two projects on the horizon, both of which will, um, both of which have, have offered me an opportunity to um, set a really high challenge, which is to find a way to make use of um, AR, VR um, uh, technology and performance. So augmented reality, virtual reality, and, and some combination of the two let's, that we call extended reality. Um, so I, you know, I've been I've been sort of toying around with um, starting a group called an extended performance sonography group, where where we would sort of um, take on the prospect of real time effects processing and um, you know real time you know using laser scanners in in completely different ways um, in order to develop um, performances. And I and I'm going to bring this this research um, to bear on. Um, on a couple of major operas in the next few years. <laughs> I think that's all I'm allowed to say about that particular project. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm working on a Wagner opera. <laughs> I'm wondering, has coronavirus and its implications for you know, social distancing and um, the use of technology to be having to use technology to interact with each other has that influenced your perception or thinking about um all these techniques that you use in your work at all um yeah it has um for sure i i think that um i think we have an imperative in a way to like try to figure out how to use um the tools that we have to bridge the distances you know, um, we do it pretty much automatically all the time, right? But but there's something about a there's something about a live event that you know I don't know does it for us in a way. Like when you're in a room with someone who's performing, it's um, it's just a very different experience um, than if you're say watching a film or even watching a you know a video conference call. Um, but somehow, but somehow, finding a way to make technology bridge the distance is, is an imperative, and I can't think of a better place than MIT to try to figure that out. Um, you know, we still don't know when large assembly art forms will, uh, you know, come out of the come out of the <laughs> out of the basement. You know, like 
right now we're all kind of sheltered. So it's hard to say when that will happen again, like when we're going to have 2,000 people in an auditorium. <laughs> it may be that these, that these 2,000 people will need to feel like they're in the auditorium. Um, and so, you know, I'm very excited by developments in like all factory AR and other kinds of things, which would really give you um, a sense of being there, even, even though you're not. Um, and hopefully without the depression that you, when you realize that you're actually not there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember where, are you, you where are you? You're in, where I'm are in you? Vermont. In Vermont, right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember you saying once um, about how, you know, when you watch sports on TV, it's, more live than live because when you go into uh, the stadium and actually like see them you're you're so far away and everything seems like it's not as live as when you see it on tv and yes. mm -hmm. i think your work definitely just is trying to get at that more live than live uh kind of yeah yeah somehow you know somehow the prospect of like actually having something live when you're when you're when you, and amplifying it is is quite is quite different when there's no um, when there's no like there there or when the there is scattered around the world you know because we can put together a group of a group of performers and maybe we will in the fall because um, I'll make a production in the fall with um, MIT students and um, the expectation is that well we don't know where things will be in the fall but. Um, in the in the odd in the odd chance that that we have to be somehow like practicing social distancing in the fall, we will find a way to make the production anyway, um, using um, whatever means of whatever technologies we can hack together at the time. So we'll see. We'll More see. live than live. <laughs> yeah. More live than live, even when it's not. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Jay, for taking the time to have this conversation with me today. And uh, thank you to everyone who joined us for this webinar. And thank you to CAST for giving us the opportunity to have this conversation. And now I'd like to turn it back over to Catherine. Great. Thank you. Thank you both. And thanks everyone for joining us for uh, this conversation with Jay Shive and Rianne Plin. Please visit arts.mit dot edu from anywhere uh, for a wide range of arts activities, online exhibitions and performances, research and more. And before ending this broadcast, I will play a longer excerpt from World of Wires at MIT in 2018. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Bye. Hey, Hunter! Hunter, what the hell? You spun here last night? You can't sleep here! Hunter, that is not okay! You cannot sleep here! Dude, I think I figured out how to model barometric pressure. So let me know if you notice like your ears popping or anything like that. Mm -hmm. All right, extraction phrase. Nobody's here. Ready? In three, two, and one. Whoa! Wow! So I'm here. And I can see what you can't see me. Uh, hi, Professor Lee. Um, okay. Hi, hey, what's uh, what is Stopper doing? Just a basic tour, just checking some stuff. We have a gun on today. Ow, oh, <laughs> my ears just popped. Crazy air pressure. What is she doing on this channel? She shouldn't be in there. <laughs> Oh my god, you are crazy so lucky! Oh, this is like completely different! I don't, I don't get it, I didn't change that much of the code, but it's like here and there! Oh my god, you gotta try this! Eat this, drink this, breathe a little! Professor Lee, what are you doing? Are you out of your fucking mind? What the hell the fuck is going on in here? Okay, I don't know, I haven't figured it out yet. Well, what's your guess? I'll put on the security tapes, but I know nobody's been in. So, have you been planning a total sabotage? I don't think so. It's not jumping. 
I swear, I, I save you. Come on, stay save me. Oh my God, he's losing a lot of blood. Get the gas. Get the gas. Come on. Thank you, the boy. Stay with me. Stay with me. No problem, man. Lung seems clear. Path the project unknown. No exit wound. Thank you, the boy. Stay with me. Patient on top consciousness. We administer CPR. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on. I need help. Come on, please. I need help. Forget it, he's gone. Come on. God it's damn over. No! God damn it, no! No! Fuck! 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 Oh, bitch! That was a great simulation. Wow, that was, that was unbelievable. That was, that was so real, holy shit! Yeah, maybe that was a little bit too real. No, no, no. No, this is exactly where we're going. More real, more harsh, that's what they want! And we can give it to them. There are a lot of things that shouldn't have started out as jokes, okay? The fact is that when you finally succeed at putting machines inside of people who find themselves living inside of machines, you're going to have to embrace some, some pretty heavy thinking about the fundamental nature of both machines and, and people. Oh. car is parked in your driveway and that Grand Theft Auto girl is still right there right next to you and you can just reach out and touch her hair eyes mouth neck shoulders stomach so, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> 